Hello, my name is Christian Hincapi, I am a veterinarian, zoo technician from the San Martin University Foundation, we are currently at the Animalvator Veterinary Clinic, I work in the area of Veterinary Clinical Laboratory. We are going to talk about a disease, which is not very often diagnosed, but which is very important for our pets, which is leukemia in canines. Leukemia is a type of malignant neoplasm, which generally affects the blood line. It can affect the white line and the red line, which will generate consequences at the blood level and we will find that it is a malignant neoplasm. But depending on the degree or depending on its chronicity, we can give a favorable or unfavorable report for the pet. How does this disease work? This disease works by changing the bone marrow tissue by neoplastic cells that will invade our bloodstream. Leukemia as in humans, in animals also occurs as a type of cancer. It is usually a malignant cancer. The outcome is the death of our pets. Leukemia is a type of malignant cancer that affects the white blood cells, that is to say, the line that is in charge of the body's defense, and many times it also triggers problems in the red line, which is in charge of carrying certain nutrients and oxygen to the cells, to the patient's tissues. The most common causes of this type of cancer in our pets are genetic or hereditary, there are also many times that diseases that have not been treated as bacterial diseases, viral diseases, can also lead us later to generate a process in the bone marrow, which will trigger this neoplastic process, and will alter certain components in the physiological system of our patients. Generally, leukemia works or is evidenced by changes in the clinical tests, such as hematology, where we are going to find very mature cells which do not have or cannot perform the work that mature cells do in this organism, in the immune system. What it will do is that it will generate many immature cells that will not be able to counteract certain diseases and what it will do is to notably decrease the patient's immunity and this will make the patient susceptible to other types of diseases such as bacterial diseases or viral diseases. Generally, leukemia is a disease called rare, since it constitutes less than 10% of the cases in canine and feline patients, which could be found by the owner, which could give him an alert to take the patient to the veterinarian. We can find progressive weight loss, lethargy, we can also find enlargement of organs such as the spleen, liver, regional lymph nodes, also that they refuse to move, that they refuse to eat. We can also find patients with very persistent fevers or that have been there for a long time and that have not been given as a consequence of this type of process. Among the signs or symptoms that can alert the owner to take his pet to the veterinarian, we can find signs such as lethargy, the patient does not have much physical activity, he no longer does certain things he commonly does, he does not play, a progressive weight loss that is evident, that the owner may have lost muscle mass in less than one or two weeks, loss of appetite, also vomiting, diarrhea. We can also find persistent fevers and let's say in the part when we go to the veterinarian and we do a complete examination, we can find regional lymph nodes increased in size, we can find a spleen and a liver also increased in size and in the subsequent hematological examinations, we can find certain cells that should not be seen in a normal patient and that can give us a warning sign to perform complementary examinations or specialized examinations to reach the diagnosis of this type of diseases. 
Once the pet is referred to a veterinary center for examination, and when the owner sees certain changes such as those we talked about earlier, the symptoms, what is done by the veterinary team, is a complete physical inspection. We will look at temperature, heart rate, respiratory rate, how are the mucous membranes, which is also one of the signs that can alert us. Let's say very pale mucous membranes, the exploration of the regional lymph nodes and also an ultrasound examination, where we are going to evaluate how the spleen is, how the liver is, we are going to evaluate if it has changes, if it has increases in size. The next thing to do is to perform a hematological examination, an examination of the red line, the white line, the platelet line and also these changes can give us a certain part to perform a more specialized study, which is the study of the bone marrow, the bone marrow cytology. In this we will show if there is a great increase of immature cell lines, which could give us the part for the diagnosis of leukemia in our patients. As for the treatment, the treatment generally consists of chemotherapies, and the same as in humans, depending on the chronicity of the patient, it will require certain visits to the veterinarian for this type of treatment, and we will also often need antibacterial agents, antimicrobials, antiviral agents. Since what leukemia will generate is a decrease in the capacity of the immune system to protect our canine, our feline, from other opportunistic diseases, in this case bacterial or viral. Chemotherapy is the treatment of choice for our patients who present or are diagnosed with the disease, with leukemia. It is a treatment that depending on the chronicity of the disease will require several sessions at the veterinarian. The purpose of chemotherapy is to destroy the cancer cells, but it also leads us to other secondary symptoms such as vomiting, diarrhea. It can also generate damage to some healthy cells of our body and it is a treatment that does not generate 100% or that will completely cure the animal. Since leukemia is a disease that is generally lethal and ends with the death of the patient. The prognosis for this disease depends on the chronicity. In patients who are diagnosed with chronic leukemia, the treatment can prolong the time of life a little more. Since when they are chronic leukemias these immature cells reach a certain degree of maturity and can act as the normal cells of the organism. Many times they are patients that can last asymptomatic and that can have a longer lifetime since the cells can generate a certain type of maturity. And when they are cases and are diagnosed with acute leukemias, the prognosis is quite reserved, since when they are diagnosed with acute leukemia generally this disease is very progressive and what it will generate is a very fast consequence of the deterioration of the patient's organism. Once we have the diagnosis, already certified, already verified by the veterinarian and supported by clinical examinations done to the patient, we can decide which would be the treatment of choice. Generally we already know that it is a lethal disease and that the treatment will not cure us 100%, but we can prolong the lifetime of our patient and our pet. It is very important that people take into account that if you decide to continue with treatments or with the patient's life, you have to give him a quality of life. He will have certain medications that must be administered continuously. He will need much more time with his owners. 
he is a patient that has to go frequently to the veterinarian for blood studies, for ultrasound studies. We have to take into account that in the case of patients with acute leukemias that do not respond to any treatment, the best choice or as part of the animal welfare, euthanasia is suggested. We must keep in mind that our patients with leukemia can also present some diseases or multisystemic failures. In this case we must also be prepared let's say by recommendations of the veterinarian in changes of habits, dietary changes, some extra medications, to help the patient. Also the visits as I have already said the periodic visits to their veterinary controls. Would be like the basics to keep in mind in cases where our pet may present a disease of this type. Although it is a disease as we have already mentioned before, which is a so-called rare disease and represents less than 10% of the cases we see in the daily clinic, we have to take into account, when we veterinarians perform inspections, and we obtain evidence of patients who have recurrent fevers, who have alterations in their erythrocyte lines, their white blood cell lines, in their platelets, that do not descend or that do not improve with any treatment, we have to take much of that into account and have as a presumptive diagnosis these cancerous processes, this type of leukemia, and do not forget that the bone marrow study is one of the most important studies to determine these diseases. In cats we must also take into account that we have a virus, which is the feline leukemia virus, which can also generate many systemic alterations, and is also a disease that generally if not diagnosed in time, if not treated properly, can end in the death of our pet. Remember that today we were talking about leukemia in our canine and feline patients, my name is Christian, veterinarian, and if you have any questions or suggestions, please contact the networks that appear on the screen with our phone numbers.